Alright, in the past five days, I've gone from knowing absolutely nothing about making a game to creating this. My very own track racing game made completely from scratch, including modeling the car. In today's video, I bring you guys along every single day of me trying to make sense of how a game is made. Alright, so it all began on Monday, which was the first time I downloaded Unreal Engine and began learning the program by following along this five hour long tutorial. This tutorial went over everything from how you move around in the game, where you spawn stuff, where you find things, and just the basics pretty much. Now what's great about working in Unreal Engine 5 is that they have basically a node-based coding system called Blueprints. So I actually didn't write a single line of code throughout this entire week, which is kind of crazy. So at the end of Monday, I had learned how to set up the scene, the lighting, the world settings, materials, meshes, and I had made my first game. But with the help of the tutorial, I ended up making uh, this right here. So we have our character, if I run into these uh, spinning things, he will ragdoll and yeah, fall on the ground. And if you make it around it, so let's say you would run like this and you jump up here, it would say GGEC on the screen and you completed uh, this very simple level. So yesterday was really just all about learning, of course, where everything is, how you move around with the camera and, you know, open the content browser. Got a small introduction into the blueprint. I also got an introduction to how the landscape works, so you know, how we create landscapes and details and stuff like that in the world. And then finally, I also learned how to, you know, place out uh, little plants and stuff like that, as well as having them be, you know, dynamic and sort of moving in the world. So that was pretty much my day one. Now today, I'll be focusing on vehicles. Since my main goal this week is gonna be to try and make some type of racing game where you can fly off ramps with the vehicle and stuff like that. So this is gonna be the most important part for me, getting the vehicle physics right and everything like that. See, so yeah, I guess it's time to boot up YouTube and watch a couple more tutorials. Did you ever wanted to create your own racing game? game, but didn't know how to start? It was very confusing at first, obviously, trying to make the car handle how I wanted to, because you can tweak every single aspect of the car. So I was following along the tutorial, kind of just copying what he did and trying to learn how I could use it later. All right, so we got step one done. We got a vehicle in the game. I added a bunch of debug visualizations uh, to the vehicle, as you can see right here, just to give me a better view of exactly what's going on, what forces are being put where. And now I guess it's just time to tweak all these settings and try to find some settings for the car, which feels good. And I think after that, I'm going to try and get my own car model and I guess copy those values onto that instead. Because yeah, in the end, I don't actually want to use this model here, uh, which is provided in Unreal Engine. This will be the most important part for this project. So yeah, I'm gonna spend a lot of time uh, making sure that this feels good. And then I stumbled upon my biggest problem yet. My car would never roll over in midair. Obviously building a stunting game, I want the car to be able to barrel roll in midair. And yeah, this turned into a big problem for me. Wait, I'm editing the vehicle movement component. What if we click the actual car? Constraint, lock, stabilization, max angular velocity. Whoa, I'm gonna be stuck on this forever. Whoa, 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 okay, wait, 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 it's spinning now. Uh, we got some errors in here, not gonna lie. Okay, guys, 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 it's been a couple hours. It's the only thing that I've been Googling for the past two hours. And then I went into the event graph of the car. Damps rotation when in air. It's literally right here. All I gotta do is click there. And now when I play and I hit the edge, we can finally do a barrel roll. Now I just need to figure out the physics for the landing. Dude, I'm so dumb. So yeah, in the end, I had to disconnect one wire from one node, which I think I spent three hours trying to find and I was actually getting really upset. But in this whole process, I learned a lot of how the vehicles handles and you know, it really helped me out in the future. So finally feeling like I had a grasp of how the vehicle handling and physics worked, it was time to actually make my own car. Now the look that I was going for in this game was to sort of have this low poly look, but also mix in some like realistic elements. So it was time to watch more tutorials on how to make a car in Blender. Welcome back to another Blender 2.8 beginner tutorial. Here's a rendered version of my low poly car. Yeah, from my first ever low poly car model, I think this one turned out quite nice. The only thing I don't really like is the back. I need to work on this. I have no clue to get this into my game, but that is gonna be tomorrow's problem. The first car that I made was mainly just kind of to get a grasp of how modeling works in Blender and you know how to make a low poly car. So the following day on Wednesday, I decided that I was gonna make a really good looking car inspired by the beautiful Envision 74. And the general car shape being kind of boxy definitely helped me out when I was going for this low poly look. And man, modeling this car was a lot of fun. I think I spent three hours in total making this one. I made sure to add a lot more details on this car because obviously adding it to the game, I wanted it to look good and fit in. All 
All right, today's day four, and we will be focusing on actually driving our car, but of course, in the game. Get Caesar here in the back seat because today I decided to take a little drive over to this nice spot. I've been sitting at the computer for so many hours these past couple of days, so I decided to get out and go for a long walk here with Caesar. All right, I took a nice walk and I'm back home. Now it's time to continue with the car. All right, so as you guys saw, I ended up scrapping this sort of first car that I made. So that's where I'm currently at. I have my car, I have my handling for the car already prepared. So next step will be to watch some tutorials and try and get this car running in Unreal Engine in the game. Okay, so I stumbled upon this. Unreal Engine 5 make AAA game vehicles. Now, I don't really allowed to make a AAA game, but it's basically a three and a half hour course and it does say import and export cars from Blender to Unreal Engine 5, how to set them up, how to set up the inputs, the camera, car sounds, everything like that. So yeah, I'm probably gonna buy this and try and figure this out. And this course that I bought was super useful throughout this entire project. Starting off with the car, getting that rigged in Blender, moving it into Unreal Engine, adding all the collisions for both the tires and the body so it can turn and work in the game. And finally, there it was. In the game, I was able to turn it. The handling was awful at first, but luckily I had spent about six hours earlier in the week learning the handling, so I could now apply it to my own car. So what I've done last night and today is basically work on getting the correct model in the game. As you can see, this is now working. And dude, I have to say, I am so happy with how the handling is when you're driving on the ground. As you can see, the turning radius is super nice. Uh, the way that the car handles when you begin to slip, the steering angle, the gear ratios, and um, not so sure, like if I pick up some speed here, and if I begin to turn like this, you can see that we slide, but we don't really slide that much. Like, it's quite easy to come to a full stop and then take control of the car again. Which I think is quite important when you're making sort of a stunt game. Where you're gonna have to jump. You sort of want to be able to move the car around quite easily. Because I kind of went away from the idea of making a drift game and focusing more on a racing slash stunting game. Just working out, like, the slipping threshold and stuff like that. Like, if I begin to turn in high speeds... You sort of just gradually begin to slip more and more and more. And, you know, just getting that to work properly. So when it comes to the actual stunting, let's say I want to fly off a ramp and stuff like that. There's one thing that I want to fix. If I jump right here, as you can see, I can land it. But it's kind of like wobbly when you actually land the car. I managed to tweak this a little bit by basically moving the center of mass of the car from being basically here in the middle to moving it back just a little bit because obviously there's more weight in the back with how this model looks. So to simplify how I could fix this, basically... You'd have something attached to the bottom of the car, like physics-wise, that would sort of pull it down. I guess I can show it with this here. So what I need to add is basically something at the bottom of the car here, which will sort of like snap the car to the ground as it begins to roll over when it's near the ground. Let's see if I can give you guys a better example of the car sort of flipping over here. When it comes to this. Um, also, I can't like control the car. Kind of like in GTA V, where you can, you know, control the car both when it's in mid-air... Um, as well as roll it over when it lands upside down. But I'm not Rockstar Games, so I had no idea how to add that. So that's like one key component that I really want to try and add to the game somehow at some point. But with the car finally set up and me learning more about the uh, program here, I'm going to try and now make sort of a map uh, which I can drive this car on. So things that I want to add is, of course, a track. A track that I can drive the car around. Um, I want to add some jumps here and there with some gaps. So I want to add a few obstacles which sort of spin around and you know if I hit the car with them It's just gonna fly away. So yeah, that was just sort of the first overall big update over I'm currently at in the game But yeah, I gotta say man, this feels really nice so far So yeah, I can't wait now to get to step two which will be building the actual game. Damn dude I found this plugin made by this guy which allows you to quite easily just build racetracks Just sort of like dragging and dropping because first I was planning on building the whole track in blender and then exporting that into unreal It costs about a hundred bucks, so it's not that bad and I'm probably gonna end up using this a lot in the future So uh, yeah, I'm gonna buy this and mess around with it as I was using this track builder I quickly realized that my handling Wasn't really that good I had sort of tuned it a bit more for drifting and maybe just flipping the car But not really going at high speeds on a track So I made this tiny test track where I could test the physics uh, before I finally began making the actual track Alright, it took a while to actually get started uh, building the track because it had some weird collision issues happening basically where the track would sort of fall into the landscape like this. But I have now sorted it and this is actually the first section of the game. Obviously no like environment to it yet or any sort of art style to it. First section will be that you start here on this point. Also I added a camera so we can now actually swivel like this around the car which is kind of nice. Um, so you have to go full speed here. Nail the apex going in here and you actually have to nail this jump in order to land over on this section and then you have to break. I'm thinking of making like a little obstacle course on this section and then put a checkpoint after that. Using this plugin I can actually also just, uh, I realized this, that if I copy 
this racetrack here. Go down here. I believe that I can just pull the fence to the side like this. Then we want to enable collision for that as well. Of course, will give us a fence here on the side, which I can actually hit like this. Um, to sort of, you know, block out the outer world, which you don't want to go messing around with in a racing game. And I'm probably going to make tomorrow the last day for this project. So, uh, yeah, we need to finish the track. Add some HUD as well, maybe a speedometer. We need to add sound to the car. Uh, maybe even a music track, which I can make myself. Yes, yeah, I still have some stuff to do. I'm working on this, like, pendulum over here. We have to sort of time it. So you can get across and continue over here. And over here, I'm thinking, like, out of the ground, that there will be, like, pillars, like, shooting up and down. So you would kind of have to, like, go around them like this, time going over. And then checkpoint would be right over here in this left turn. Now let's add some barriers on the side on this bit. We'll, like, fine-tune it just a little bit. Right, so that is now a minefield of cylinders. Now we need to make it so that these just begin shooting out of the ground, basically. Oh, they're all going up. That's not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> how far down do they go? They're not gonna stop falling. <laughs> You're just going. I mean, I couldn't figure out how to make them go upwards like that. So instead, I just made them all wiggle like this, which is kind of nice, though, because they can actually, like, push you out of the map a bit easier. As you can see, it's kind of a struggle to get through. If you get hit by one, it's gonna knock you into the other one. Now I need to reverse, and eventually, I'm out of the map. So yeah, it kind of works nice. Okay, first playthrough of the first level. Let's see. Will I complete it first try? We still need to put barriers here at the start. So we can get this jump. Yes, we can. A bit wobbly. A bit wobbly, but we got the break. I also increased the brakes a little bit because, yeah, they were a bit too weak. Did it spin this way before? No, it didn't. Wait, what did that... <laughs> Wait, I swear this is supposed to be minus one, right? Let's try it again. Cut the apex. Make sure we're straight break and there we go i'm not sure why i get these spheres randomly in the world but yeah, i can't wait to add like engine sounds and sound effects and stuff like that too it's probably quite tricky but oh that was the cleanest jump yet damn that looks smooth okay and then for this bit here it's gonna go oh land it come on no maybe i can just grab this piece scale this up a little we sort of have a landing ramp i'm not sure if that's gonna work or not i guess we'll find out i think i need more speed oh Yep, oh my god! <laughs> hey, you landed it! I think it's all good for now, and the ramp worked perfectly. The wheel radius is actually perfect here as well. <gasps> Don't get knocked out now. Here we go, made it to the first checkpoint. So what I'm gonna do now is I think add some art to the map. I'm probably gonna use some assets that I'm gonna find online, like some nice trees, some low poly clouds, some foliage and stuff like that, because I don't wanna spend time building all of that when there's so many assets to use, uh, some for free as well. And yeah, once that done, we might do like one super hard stunt at the end to sort of wrap up the course. Right, so it was finally time to build the environment and get an overall look on the game. And this was so rewarding to start doing because everything just sort of came together. Now, I purchased this low poly asset pack, which had a bunch of nice trees and rocks that I could place out in the world. So I just kind of went to town and began building the environment. Alright, dude, this is where we are now. This took about an hour 30, just building all of this terrain, you know. You know, I could use this thing called a foliage brush to basically select what I wanted to place and just kind of paint it out. And, you know, I ended up buying this pack which contained all of these assets, which was definitely worth it. They look so good in here. I also did some slight work to the terrain. I just kind of painted it with a nice grass texture. You know, making it sort of blend in with some dirt and some gravel here as the ground rises up. Added all the sides to the racetrack. I added some colors here, fixed this bit. And, dude, I'm actually so stoked. As to how this turned out, it looks really good. It still runs very, very nicely. Like, I was a bit afraid that maybe adding all this foliage would kind of make the level lag, but it's definitely still playable and it looks beautiful. I did also tweak a little bit with the lighting because, yeah, we can also, of course, change that to, let's say, we want it to be almost sunset. And it looks really, really pretty in here. The sun sort of going into the trees. So yeah, we'll continue tomorrow where I'm going to work on the final checkpoint to the finish line. As well as adding sound effects and potentially a song as well. Just something easy that I can make. Alright, today is Saturday. I began this project on Monday, I believe. Since last night, I have worked a little bit on improving the lightning on the level, which isn't really that important but it's kind of like how it looks now added some like blue i also improved how the sky looks and stuff like that also spent like two hours today trying to get uh, a speedometer to work as you can see i built all of this right here this broke my brain i had to build this function this function build this function in the lap time i had to build all of these ones as well in here i have to build all of this for the checkpoint i added even more stuff in here also we could track the time on the track but you'll notice that now if i press play 
We actually have down in the corner, we have a speed which will start at the checkpoint in front of me. This uh, blue looking thing. As well as if you listen... I added a super simple engine sound. I wanted to find like a futuristic sounding engine. I'm not really too happy with how the engine sound turned out, but I don't really care. And instead of having a speedometer with a dial, I just uh, put the numbers uh, down in the right hand corner as you can see. And then you also have the time down to the left. So we spawn in here and we cross this one, you'll see that the timer begins. And crossing this one, it will stop. But you might notice that the top one blinked for a second. That is supposed to show the final time. But instead of doing that, it's just... It just says zero, and when I cross, it just says zero, but we can still see the time uh, down the left-hand corner, so it's all good. So now it's time to work on the final part of the map before we set out a finish line. Yesterday I mentioned that I was gonna build this out and do a huge jump at the end. I think we're gonna try and do something where we have to, like, jump through a small gap, and that will be the finish line. I'm gonna aim for a target speed of, like, 150, because so I need to sort of make sure that I can actually hit the gap that I'm going for. That's probably landable. We will deform the landscape. Here we go, we can land it, we can land it. Okay, nice. Now to add something to fly through, and then we'll work on the foliage, add a finish line, that should be it. Maybe I can use these assets that I got with the pack that I bought. Maybe I can use some other assets for the side, so to build something. Now, it might be kind of hard to absolutely nail this as I go through the full course later, because I need to make sure that I hit the perfect speed just like that to make that jump. Yeah, let's quickly add some foliage and then I'm pretty much wrapped up, I think. All right, and we are done. Look at this. Now we got a beautiful section here. We got some vines hanging down. We got all the trees, bushes. We'll fly through this, land over here. And this is the finish line. Right, it is time. The first official playthrough from start to finish. Let's see what time I can set. Hit play. I'm gonna try to really go into full screen. So, now for some reason, I didn't notice here that my wheels weren't actually turning. So, I'm gonna show a full run as well with the wheels working. So, I'll have to do. Let's see if we can get this first try here. Nope. <laughs> Only thing I would maybe add is to like have a command so you can flip over the car when it's flipped. But. For now, this is totally fine. At some point, I had to stop working on the prototype, I guess you can call it. Ooh, that was clean. That's the cleanest part. Or the cleanest way I've gotten that part yet. This was a bit tricky. I have to go kind of slow here. This was just really like for me to test different obstacles and stuff like that and how they work, you know? And now for the big jump. I'm probably gonna mess this up. I think I have too much speed. Come on! Oh, we got it! And it's land. Okay, nice, nice, nice. 37 seconds. Damn, it went quick to cross the full map. And here we go. 41.62 from one point to the other. So that was my first ever completed level that I have made. And that was it. That was my five day journey of going from absolutely zero knowledge to making a game to having a working racing game. Now, I learned so many things this week and it was actually a lot of fun to learn something new creatively. I've been struggling a bit lately, feeling like creatively challenged, if that makes sense. I just sort of feel like with my videos, I've been making the same thing over and over and over again. So learning something new that I can potentially use in the future on the channel as well was a lot of fun and definitely very rewarding. Which also made me realize that for the future of this channel, I want to make more stuff like this. Not specifically video game making videos, but just videos or ideas that I really enjoy making which also sparks my creativity and my interest but i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video click over to check out another one and i'll catch you guys later take care